we get in ruts, I think we just miss out on so much because we're usually not connecting. You know, we're just kind of going through the routine. I think every marriage goes through it, it sometime. You just, if you realize in a rut, you don't want to get stuck there. We also have to be intentional about our marriage during this time. Because if you take an 18 year break on your marriage while you raise a kid, or longer than that if you raise more than one kid, um, then what do you have to come back to? Has your marriage gotten a little bit stale? We don't believe that a marriage needs to get boring. And so today we're going to talk about ways to bust out of a rut if you have gotten stuck in your marriage. Today on this podcast episode, we're giving some practical and fun ways to make marriage more fun and exciting again. So Dr. Kim, as we're getting into this topic, I'm excited to tackle this today. This is something you, Nancy, have done well. And one of the things that you say is marriage doesn't get boring unless we let it. So um, anybody who's following us on social media already knows that Dr. Kim and Nancy have a lot of fun together because we get to see it in reels and in all kinds of things. And they show the fun side of marriage. So I'm curious, Dr. Kim, is that always been the case for you guys? I think overall, I mean, I think we probably have had our ruts maybe, but we don't stay there very long. I don't think we've ever stayed Mm -hmm. in a rut. And I think we've just always, you know, in dating, we always were uh, trying new things, exploring, Mm -hmm. laughing together. You know, we always would do those things. And that was always an important part of a relationship. And it just kind of carried over into marriage. And I think early marriage, it helped us a lot because the fact that we learn to not always take things too serious, uh, I think really helped us and that we enjoyed having Mm -hmm. fun together. And it's kind of like, okay, we're sitting here in this rut. We're not doing anything. And what are we missing out on? And so I think the fact Mm -hmm. that we both enjoyed those kind of things, you know, doing things, exploring, trying something new, Mm -hmm. really, really helped a lot. You know, (laughs) I was thinking Sunday night, we were just kind of sitting around and I just came in the room and I was doing this stupid walk. I don't know how to even <laughs> describe it. It's to get her attention, to make her laugh. And, and that's how she did. And I just said, you know, how, do you see how hard I work to get you to laugh sometimes? <laughs> she laughed. But I, th- I think that's always been there for us. And so I, I think for us that we, fun has always been a really important part of our marriage. And, you know, mm-hmm. I think I, the first time I ever saw that painting of Jesus laughing, that, uh, mm-hmm. It just hit me think, I don't know why before, I guess I always thought, you know, everybody's so reverent and God's, you know, mm. but know that mm-hmm. God gave us everything. So if yeah. we laugh, he laughs, if, you know, those yeah. kind of things. And and to just enjoy that is the gift. I think it is in our marriages. Mm-hmm. And so when we get in ruts, I think we just miss out on so much because we're usually not mm-hmm. connecting. You know, we're just kind of going through the routine. You know, and I, and I see a lot of people mm-hmm. coming to counseling and I'll just ask them what a typical week is like. And like every day is the same, you know, and it's not, mm-hmm. it's bad. Mm-hmm. They're not yelling and screaming right. at each other, but mm-hmm. they're just not doing anything to grow their marriage. And I, I've said mm-hmm. it so many times, but your, your marriage is either moving forward or backwards. It just doesn't mm-hmm. stand still. And mm-hmm. so I always want ours to move forward. And if we start moving back, I want to catch it quickly and head mm-hmm. it back in the right direction. Mm hmm. That's so good. And I, I think it's interesting as you're saying that I'm wondering if there's got to be a lot of physiological benefits to laughing. I mean, we know there's a ton with like connection, touch, loneliness, all these things or community as an antidote to loneliness, which is terrible for your physical health. But I know yeah. there's there's got to be a lot for laughter also. Yeah, there's some things I've read. I didn't pull any up for today, but yes, that they've proven what mm-hmm. laughter does for us, that it just, mm-hmm. uh, it's a very healing thing for us. It's a real positive thing for us. And so, um, yeah, finding things that you can laugh about is really, really fun. Yeah. Um, I'm always surprised when, you know, through uh, pastoral ministry, Brian and I counsel a lot of couples who are about to get married. So we do premarital counseling. And one thing we ask about is what they do for fun together. And yeah. there are so many couples who do not know what to say. They don't have an answer. And it makes wow. me so sad. <laughs> I know. Cause I think, you know, cause sometimes I will ask couples that and most of them, can talk about a time when they're dating or something they did. But if somebody Mm. wasn't having fun and they were dating, I'd think, how did you get here? Why did you, (laughs) why do you, why do you, why do you have a ring on your finger? You know, I'm not saying that, but I mean, really that's to me, you, I wanted to be with someone that I could have fun with. 
you know. Yeah, yeah. Just not take life so seriously. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Um, so how often would you say that couples, when they come in for counseling, would say that they're in a marriage rut or w- you would say that they're in a marriage rut and what's causing it? Yeah, it's interesting. I think sometimes I don't think they even think that they're in a rut because I think the mm. problem they're coming in for, the rut predated all of that. And just not mm. having that connection was an issue in there. But I think any time, mm-hmm. I guess a rut was, as I see it, when a marriage uh, relationship, it just it gets kind of stagnant or it's just so mm-hmm. routine. There's no mm-hmm. no real excitement. You're not having new experiences. Uh, you feel this kind of a boredom. And I think mm. you feel dissatisfied, like there should be something more, but nobody's doing anything about it. And then I think you begin to be disconnected in some ways. And so mm-hmm. when when I see somebody in counseling, it's because they've got to that disconnection piece. Mm-hmm. But the deconnection mm-hmm. piece a lot of times goes back because you guys have been in a rut for a long time. Mm-hmm. And that's, you haven't connected. You've been just kind of going through the motions and that's why you're in the position that you are now. And I think the more, Mm -hmm. the longer that you are in those ruts, the harder it is on the marriage. Um, I think every marriage goes through it it sometime. You just, if you realize Mm -hmm. in a rut, you don't want to get stuck there. You don't want to go through Mm -hmm. that, the same things over and over and over day after day, month after month, year after year, because Mm -hmm. it's not going to give you the marriage that I think you dreamed of the day you stood an altar and said, I do. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So what what's causing them? How are they getting in the rut? I think just by uh, not being intentional. I think we get mm-hmm. I think we get lazy. Honestly, I really do. And mm-hmm. I get that. We get tired. I know people are in jobs that are very tiring. Raising kids can be tiring. Uh, but mm-hmm. what we found in raising kids, we needed that date night. We needed mm-hmm. that time for the two of us. It re- rejuvenated us it made mm-hmm. us better parents when we came back on for back for the next week it connected us and we were able to just spend time together and enjoy each other mm-hmm. and talk about things you know those kind of things and so i think when we quit doing those things then the rut happens and i i get it i think mm-hmm. it's it's really hard when you have kids sometimes mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. to let your marriage get in a rut you may be really active but if yeah. everything you're doing is kid stuff then are you real, is your marriage in a rut? Mm -hmm. And so I think sometimes it could be masked because we're spending time with the kids. And that's great. I mean, we loved our time with our kids, but we also realized we also have to be intentional about our marriage during this time. Yeah. Because if you take an 18 year break on your marriage while you raise a kid or longer than that, if you raise more than one kid, um, Mm -hmm. then what do you have to come back to? Mm -hmm. You know, and you just can't do that. So I think it's, it's, it's got to take, intentionality. It's got to be one of you saying something. Oh my gosh. Remember how we used to laugh so much. Mm -hmm. When was the last time we laughed? Oh, I don't remember. Yeah. Okay. What's what you remember? We used to watch those funny videos. Let's start watching those again or let's, you know, play that game that we used to play that we would just die laughing at at some of the things that happened in the game. Yeah. Just get back and, and get something going again. Yeah, that's good. That's good. You know, it's funny as you're saying that I was thinking about, I have heard people who talk about date night, like as just a checklist obligation. And it makes me so sad for them because they're like, why do we have to? It's like, well, what what kind of question is that? Why why do you dread it? Why are you dreading it so much? Something's wrong with your date night if you think it sounds like a drudge. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's, you don't want that to be a checklist thing. That's a really good way to put it, Lindsay, is it's not a checklist. It's something that you want to enjoy and you look forward to Mm -hmm. and- um, yeah, that it's important and enjoy yeah. it. Don't just go, okay, we're going to go to dinner. We're not going to yeah. talk. We're going to stay on our yeah. phones the whole time. Ooh. We're going <laughs> to, then we're going to drive around because we don't know what to do. Then we're going to come home. We might drive mm. around a little longer. So the babysitter yeah. gets the full money we pay, we promised her, but you know, that's it. And that's no, oh, make gosh. it fun. Do something fun. Yeah. You, for, you forgot the part where you get in the car and say, well, where do you want to go? I don't know. Where do you want to go? And then you spend 30 minutes arguing over where to go for dinner. <laughs> Just oh my God. Yeah, that's the <laughs> the thing. When we did that, well, that's when we started uh, 
that year that we we uh, started going picking that what used to be the yellow pages, which we don't have yeah. anymore. And we'd go through the alphabet and pick one restaurant each week out of the alphabet. So we knew what Love we were going to do. We didn't get all the way through the alphabet. But it was, it was kind of fun because we tried to pick the eight yeah. places we'd never been before. And there were some places that we went that we'll never would never go again. But there's yeah. some that we <laughs> went, went on our list. Oh, we want to come back to this place, you know. So you can you just got to you know. And now you got Google. Okay, Google. Yeah. How, how to have fun on a date? <laughs> Google. You know. Yeah. How do we have fun when we're trying? How do we make it fun when we're trying to decide where to go for dinner? You get some answers. Hey, I have a better resource than Google. It's the awesomemarriage.com website because we have extensively yes. provided resources for this exact situation from the the dinner uh, destination to the date conversation topics, et cetera. We have it all there. It's literally all at awesomemarriage.com. Most of it's on the blog. But if you are looking for that, Google it. You'll probably find the Awesome Marriage site because we have a ton of great stuff to help hit these actual pain points that we know couples are really trying to navigate. And we also have great ideas on there for dates at home. Mm-hmm. So if you're thinking, we well, we Lots. really, we're in that season we can't afford a babysitter. Okay. Yep. Put the kids to bed early and then yeah. you have your date night at home. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of good stuff there. Yeah. Yes. There's, there's no reason to stay in that rut. So let's talk about what some steps to get out of a rut in general. So what's your first step you'd give a couple? I think you've got to acknowledge the issue. I think you've got to mm-hmm. admit there is a problem here. Mm-hmm. Uh, you both have to decide that. And so if one of you initiates it and maybe the other just that might put in the effort right now, um, mm. see if you can find just one, um, one thing that you, that you can do, you know, mm-hmm. and, and maybe it's starting out with just, uh, uh, talking, maybe walking around the block, taking a walk mm. that you haven't done in mm-hmm. months. It's amazing mm-hmm. to me how many couples really enjoy walking together and usually mm-hmm. conversations happen. And I, mm-hmm. I don't know, I talked to my friend Les Perry about that once and he was talking about their marriage and how, and, and his counseling, how many couples say the same thing. So there's mm-hmm. something in the way God wired us that we're walking side by side if the conversation happens. So mm-hmm. that's something different you can do. That doesn't mm-hmm. cost any money. doesn't take a lot of time to do something like that. Mm-hmm. But just acknowledge you got a problem and um, then, okay, then you can begin to talk about what you can do about it. Mm-hmm. That's good. That's a great place to start. That's a great place to just get it on the yeah. table and stop ignoring yes. it. Mm-hmm. Yes. So what's the next step? Uh, tech free. You know, it, mm-hmm. it kills me when we go out to eat or something and the couple's on their phones, you know. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if they're on just for a second because maybe the babysitter, I mean, fine with that. Mm-hmm. But I think you're not going to have a good conversation with your phones in your hands. So yeah. uh, put them up, you know, put it mm-hmm. and leave it in the car. If you have ba- need babysitter, take it in with you. Yeah, but put it on where it's going to ring really loud if she calls and have her have a yeah. special ringtone. Put it sure. in your purse, yeah. you know. Yeah, and do things mm-hmm. like that so you're not looking at your phone. I, I think it's a great idea to have a, have a separate ringtone for someone like a babysitter or for mm-hmm. like uh, some other pe- important people in your life so you know, okay, oh, that is. And they know we're on a mm-hmm. date so they wouldn't call me unless they didn't. Mm-hmm. So I think tech-free is an important one. Yeah, that's true. That's so true. And I think for some good ideas on some tech boundaries, we have an episode of the podcast with Arlene Pelicane, who has written extensively on the topic. And I really trust and respect her research and her wisdom on this. So we'll link to that in the show notes. Um, So let's talk about the next step. What's your third step on this? I think build that quality time in uh, to your day um, or to a week as often as you can. Mm talked about walking around the block, um, dinner together. You know, we would have times when if I was going to be in a meeting or something late when the kids were little that Nancy would feed the kids and kind of get them. And when I got home, we'd have dinner together and, mm. uh, just looking for those opportunities. And one of the books we talk about touch points be- and mm-hmm. that's just a time to connect with your spouse and they're there every day, but a lot of times we just don't see them or we ignore them, you know, mm. um, just what can you do? You, we can take that walk around. Maybe it's just um, sitting down on the patio together, or maybe it's uh, mm-hmm. whatever it is. That time is so valuable, and I think it needs to happen every day. And if you miss a day, mm-hmm. just don't miss two, you know? And, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. just this maybe 10, 15 minutes is okay. Start with mm-hmm. that. And then if it goes longer, mm-hmm. great. 